Good evening, good evening, good evening, New Providence Baptist Church family and Facebook friends around the world. We're glad that you are with us this evening. Hope you've had a great day. And I'm still praying that some of you will get some rain because um, I know that, that although it's um, was, some areas are getting kind of flooding rain around, if you it's either feast or famine, it appears. And if you don't get a lot, you don't get any, it seems like. So hope you're getting some and um, your gardens and yards and all those things are um, being watered and nourished and all that. God's in control of that too, by the way. If you're not getting any, um, just keep talking to him about it and he'll take care of all the details. Glad again that you're here with us tonight. I've had a, a great day today. My granddaughters who came down, I believe it was Friday from uh, Knoxville for the last week of summer vacation, spent the week with us and we just took them home um, to meet their dad just a little while ago. And so we're um, now a childless, we're empty nesters again at the house. Uh, Miss Kim is uh, goes back to school tomorrow so uh, this was the, this morning was uh, the big uh, last the last uh, summer breakfast for the girls. So we had a big breakfast and just had fun all week and thankful for my family and, and for all that God is doing. So <clears throat> I had a good day. However, I just walked in literally about two minutes ago, just before we were supposed to get started. And uh, uh, Pastor Gary's here and I used to make him nervous with that kind of stuff, but it doesn't even make him nervous anymore. He's just thinking, well, I'll just flash up a sign or do a recording or something. So anyway, I, I just ran in um, from, from the house, ran into the house, picked up my, my Bible and uh, grabbed my, I always print my outlines for, um, for Wednesday evenings. And um, uh, each one kind of looks a little bit the same kind of format, but I looked at it and I realized it says July 22nd. Uh, and that sometimes I forget to change the date, so I looked further and it says week 19, and that's wrong. It's week 20, uh, and it's when God said it from Judges chapter 6. So uh, all of that was last week's notes. So I picked up the notes off the table, just jammed them in the Bible, and ran out the door, told Miss Kim, I said, I'm going to. Um, uh, church, I'll, I'll be back and later. She said, well, I'll watch you online. I said, okay. And I looked at the, the Bible that I stuffed it in, and this is not my preaching Bible. This is my just daily devotional NIV. So it's a little different for you tonight. So I don't have my notes. This These are last week, so I can use a little bit of the announcements and things from, from this um, and a little bit of prayer list. But... Um, for today, we're, I'm going to read to you the passage that I had prepared for you today. And I really had looked at a, at a particular passage that is um, a, a really a, an interesting passage from uh, the Psalms, Psalms number 18. This is one of those passages that um, is recorded in another place as well. In the book of 2 Samuel, you can find this, um, this passage of Scripture as well. But I'm, I'm, when it was placed into the Hebrew hymn book, it was uh, placed there as Psalms number 18. And it is a, a psalm of David. And he uh, uh, sang this song when, when he was uh, finally freed from Saul and, and, and just kind of at peace with everybody. It was a, a good time. And he looked back and reflected and he considered what God has done. Last week, I, I preached from this, this passage about uh, in Judges about Gideon. And, and I talked a little bit this past Sunday about um, uh, from First uh, Peter chapter two, uh, when Peter quoted several passages from Isaiah fifty three, and and in that passage, I, Isaiah uh, spoke and wrote as if it had already happened. Now, in in the history of the world, it had already happened, but it was yet seven hundred years before Jesus came, and about uh, thirty or forty years before, after Jesus was resurrected that Peter was recalling that. So nearly 750 years uh, uh, earlier, uh, Isaiah had written those words. So it's kind of neat to, to look back and, and be able to, to use this Bible as your evidence and as the testimony of God's faithfulness. So that's really what we're going to do tonight. And I want to read this passage. And I, the reason that my, my NIV was laying on my, on my table beside of my 
preaching Bible, my New King James Bible that I carry most all the time. I read this Bible every morning in my devotion and just um, uh, uh, often just, just ca kind of casual. The NIV is a little bit easier language to understand. This is an NIV, a 1985 NIV. They updated it in, the, in I think, 2011. And they changed out some pronouns, made some um, pronouns. Instead of man, it would say uh, mankind. Or uh, they changed it uh, and took away some of the gender identity and all that. So I don't, I don't really like the, the newer NIV personally. Uh, if you read that, that's okay. It's, it is easier to understand. But this, this <clears throat> NIV is, uh, again, one of my study Bibles and, and just devotional Bibles that I've read for years and years and years. So I had gone back and reread Psalm 18 <clears throat> in a couple of different translations. I often do that when I am studying a passage. I'll read it uh, in the New King James, King James, ESV, uh, New American Standard, CSB, and NIV pretty pretty often. So I, I'd read it here, and that's why that Bible was laying close to my laptop and um, where I, where my other notes were laying. So, uh, um, but I don't I don't need to, to look back at the notes specifically because my purpose today was to read you this and let you consider it and just maybe pause a time or two as we're going through. It's a long psalm, pretty long. I think fifty verses, I believe. Um, so it, it's a, a pretty pretty lengthy psalm. Yeah, fifty. Uh, pretty lengthy psalm for us. And since I didn't, my, my normal notes are I print, the reason I print out all my text and scripture and my notes is because I print it in a larger font so I don't have to wear my glasses because I'm so vain. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going to have to be vain tonight and put my glasses on so I can see my Bible enough to read this to you, okay? So a little bit different tonight. Uh, let me uh, remind you of just a couple of prayer requests. Just got a, a prayer request from Daniel Pinkston just in the last hour or two anyway. Uh, his dad is, has been in the hospital last little bit. They're going to release him maybe today or tomorrow, and they really don't know uh, where, where what, what kind of care to get for him if he needs to go back to a, a nursing home facility for a little while to try to continue to recover or uh, what they're going to do. So please pray for the Pingstons. Um, I just lift them up in prayer as they make some tough decisions trying to figure that out and trying to find a, a location. Of course, they're not able to see him very much, very often at all uh, in, in the hospital or, or the nursing home. They've got restricted visiting and all that stuff. So that's tough for Miss Margaret uh, Donald's, uh, Dan, Daniel's uh, mom. So just remember all the family. That's, that's just a current prayer request right now and lift them up, if you will and ask God to, to carry them. There's other prayer requests. I'll share some of those in the, in the, at the end as well. But uh, just got, just received that, so I thought well, I should start with that prayer request. Um, uh, please pray for Costanza and Paul, uh, Paula Wintley, um, who uh, are sick with COVID-19. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's remember uh, that one. So uh, I'm, uh, Deb, I hope will come in. I'm going to write that down, Mark. We're going to pray for that. Uh, at the at the end, okay. So so with some others as well. I've gotten reports uh, this week of two or three other people as well. So Mark Horner, we will pray for um, uh, Costanza and and Paula uh, in just a few minutes, okay. Um, that's Sean Wentley's family. Sean is the missionary um, uh, over in Greece who now moved here a few years ago. He serves at a church in Maribel. Um, and just a, a, just a precious family to us. I, I really love that family. Got to minister with them uh, for a while. So we'll do that. But I want to pray for Daniel to begin with. And then we're going to look at this passage. Now, I'm just going to read it to you. I want you to listen closely and you can read along. Uh, but also thinking about what, as David looked back over his life, how God had gotten him to this place. Okay? So let me pray with you. Father, I love you. And I thank you for this opportunity tonight to fellowship with, with our church family and and our internet family, Lord, that is gathered um, uh, at laptops and, and televisions and telephones and, and um, iPads and, and tablets and uh, just, just uh, different various ways that they're connecting through Facebook Live or YouTube or whatever it might be, literally all around the world. And I pray today that you will encourage us as we look at these words and this, these truths, and I pray that they will stir our hearts and change us challenge us and just bless us as we uh, seek your face and trust you in in every day of our life. Good days, bad days, uncertain days, but all of these are the days the Lord has made, so I'm going to rejoice and be glad in them. 
And Father, I come to you right now asking you to pray for, asking you to be with my friend Daniel Pinkston and his family. They've just had a rough um, six weeks or so, especially six or eight weeks as as uh, we've had sickness in their family, them personally, and Daniel's trying to, to be a, a faithful husband and, and father and son and still employee, dealing with sickness himself, then his parents' sicknesses and others around him. Lord, just help him. Give him wisdom and discernment. Let him sense your spirit and hear your voice clearly that he might know how to respond to you best so that he might honor his father and mother. Uh, Lord, and just bless that family. I'll be with Miss Jennifer, who had a little bit of a relapse, wasn't feeling real good this weekend from her uh, recent diagnosis as well. But I pray that you'll just you just uh, heal her body and spirit and mind as well, uh, and all the family. Lord, just keep us in your hands and care. I love you, and I thank you for hearing us. Now I ask you to speak to our hearts through this word that it might change us forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, in Psalms number 18, if you have your Bibles there with you, uh, <clears throat> checking that out. Again, uh, it's uh, the, the passage that you, you can find uh, this, this uh, related to us in is over in um, 1 Samuel. And, and just really a, a neat passage uh, of, of David uh, recognizing that God was in control. He was doing a marvelous thing to uh, to establish the kingdom for God for for David uh, uh, and letting him understand really the promises that he had made already and how all of those promises kind of come together and um, when they come together uh, David realizes that um, he is uh, that, that God is absolutely in control and he's he's got all this stuff settled in in his mind and spirit God's going to going to take care of the kingdom just like. <clears throat> Excuse me, just like he had promised all along, and so David, when he when he um, writes this poem or this song, he's just reflecting. It's a time that he's just kind of reflecting. Lots of good things have happened. Lots of bad things have happened in his life. Uh, often, um, uh, the Bible does not um, uh, kind of candy coat or hide those things when people are struggling or people have sins and failures. David had a list of those as well, but this was the time when he, when he really was just kind of sitting down and contemplating all the things that God had done, okay? So listen to these words from Psalms number 18, or again, it's pretty closely attached to 2 Samuel chapter 22. Uh, if you want to look there, the, it's, there's a few uh, verses that change, but it's very, very close. Uh, Psalms 18, <clears throat> David says this, I love you, O Lord my strength. I love you, O Jehovah, my strength. When I even read those first words, my heart just begins to, to uh, melt just a little bit, just to soften just a little bit. When I think about David uh, uh, recognizing this phrase um, and th this, this idea that Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, he is going to keep it. He's going to do what he said he would do. I love you, Oh, my Lord Jehovah, my strength. The Lord Jehovah is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My rock, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Listen to the, the, the permanence and the strength of those words. Jehovah is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my rock in whom I take refuge. He's my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The Lord Jehovah is my rock. God is my rock. He's recognizing God as this promise keeper who also is this mighty uh, creator. He's saying God is all of that. He's my rock. He's my stability. He's my strength. He's whom I can build upon. He's whom I can hide in. He is all of those things. And I call to the Lord. I call to Jehovah who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies, not because I've fought my way out, but because I've called on Jehovah, who promised that he would carry me. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. 
he says in those two verses, I was at the point of death. Death was all around me. It grabbed me. It held on to me. There were things that were fearful in that moment, in those situations and issues. He was remembering, I think, running from Saul when he had been so faithful to support Saul. But the enemy Saul, who was uh, had a spirit, uh, evil spirit from the Lord, by the way, who, who had this evil spirit from the Lord. He was so angry with David, so prideful, so haughty, so arrogant, so filled with himself. When David was given any credit from anyone, he was so angry and wanted to kill him. And David said, I just felt like I was always under a, under a death sentence. There was always something that was that was attacking me. And, and he said, I, I just felt this. And they, it was strangling me. Listen again to the, the cords of death just wrapped around me and entangled me. The torrents or the waves and the wind of destruction overwhelmed me. I couldn't face them. It knocked me down and beat me up and overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave reached up and coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. Then he says this in verse number six, in my distress, I called to Jehovah. What a, what a great, great reminder for us. In my distress, I went to the one place I knew I could find help, Jehovah, because he had promised me that I could find help there. We sometimes have to be driven to a place where we are desperate before we reach out in our desperation and grab hold of the one who has always been there. Now, the truth is we don't have to go there. I heard someone say long ago that the experience is the greatest teacher and us failing and doing, we learn our lessons from that. I, I disagree a bit. I think experience is a marvelous teacher, but I think us watching someone else experience that is truly a wise way to learn. You don't have to go through all the bad times that you often do, or I often do. We go through those because we've failed. We've made some mistake. We've sinned somehow and we pay the consequences, then sometimes the scars of those consequences continue to teach us. But the truth is we don't have to do that to gain wisdom, to gain knowledge and, and an ability to get away from those things. David just remembered, I, I was the death tried to capture me, uh, distress came upon me, destruction came, all of those things came and I was nearly at the point and in my distress when I didn't have anywhere else to turn, didn't know what else to do, I turned, what a cool thing, I called on Jehovah. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Verse 6 is a really interesting and wonderful verse because it, first of all, it says where he began. In my distress. David didn't wait until he got out of the distress. Sometimes people have said to me through the years, Preacher, I know I've not been to church in a long time. I'm coming back. I want you to know that, but, but I... I, I I'm just, I've got to get some things straightened up in my life. When I get my life back in order, I'll, I'll be back in church. And my answer to them is always the same. The reason your life is not in order is because you've been trying to handle it. You don't need to wait until it gets better to come back to God. Come back to God now and he'll make it better. You're probably not going to be able to get through this thing without being around the people of God, being, being uh, in worship services and loving that. And, and until we're able to do that, it is very difficult for us and our strength to come back. So David, in his distress, he, he realized when he was desperate, he had to call on the Lord. So in my distress, verse 6 again, in my distress, I called to the Lord Jehovah, I cried to my God. So he recognized, I cried out to the promise keeper who is also the creator God. I called out to him because I knew I was in trouble. So I cried out uh, to, to him in my distress. I called him, I cried to God for help. I knew what he was doing. And from his temple, he heard my voice. Uh, that's a sweet thought. That God, when you cry out to God, he hears you. And he doesn't just hear sound. He doesn't hear the wind blowing or some mumbling. He hears you. God hears you. Isn't that a comforting thought today? Whatever's going on in your life, 
I, I said a moment ago, Miss Kim and, and several of the, the folks in the school system are going back tomorrow. Some have gone earlier this week, and, and all of the kids are going to be coming back in a week or so in, in Loudoun County in Lenore City. So that's, that's it's getting close. And there's some parents right now that are calling out to Jehovah keeping God and saying, reminding him about the, the, the promises that he's said to us and he's given us and the things they can depend on and hold on to. There's some stressful things in their lives right now. So they're calling out to God and the cry comes to him. He hears your voice. He knows about you, your situation, your distress, your uh, uh, anxieties, your problems, all of those things. And from his temple, he hears you and your cry comes before him into his ears. With a, with a billion people praying right now around the world at 7 o'clock Eastern time, the prayer meetings going on virtually and face-to-face and all of those things and small groups meeting and all kinds of things. All of us crying out to God from wherever we are in whatever language we speak, our heart's language, multiple uh, dialects and, and all of that's coming up to God and he hears your voice directly into his ears. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to come through your pastor. You don't have to go through anyone, anywhere, anytime. You pray directly to God through, only through his son, Jesus, and in his name. And God hears your voice and he hears uh, your need and he knows your cry. God knows it comes straight to him. How marvelous is that, that God hears us. Verse 7 says, The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth, burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies, great bolts of lightning, and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord Jehovah, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. Those verses from verse 7 through verse 15 did you hear the, the power that God displayed? The earth shook, lightning flashed, thunder rolled, the, the waves crashed away and the sea parted and all of that. Do you know why? Are you listening to the whole psalm, to the entire song that David has written, the entire testimony that he's giving? He did that because my enemies were chasing me. I cried out to God. I called out to Jehovah and told him I was in trouble. It was in my distress and he not only heard my voice, it not only came into his ears, but when that happened, he acted. God responded with terror and power and authority and God can do that for you tonight. You may say, well, I don't really have enemies trying to kill me. I don't have those kinds of stresses really going on in my life. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter the size of your stress or the type of your stress or the anxiousness of your stress. My God is able. He is able to carry us through all of that. Then once he does that, he displays his power. And I believe God can do that culturally and around the globe today. I think God can do that if he so chooses to, to deal with this pandemic, if that's how he chooses. He can send lightning and thunder and he can make things happen and, and, and shake the earth and all of that kind of stuff if he chooses. But listen again to what he does uh, every time. Verse 16, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. <laughs> Man, I love that. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. There is something just way, way good when God takes hold of you. 
when you're afraid or anxious or the enemy is, he's already doing all this, this stuff displaying his power. Now, the problem is sometimes his power scares us that he's using as a weapon to defend us and to protect us and to show us his glory, his power, his majesty, his authority, to, to show all of that. We see that and that scares us. So when we're scared, what he does is reach down his hand and hold us. And he just, there is something calming and peaceful and stress relieving and, and comforting when the, the hand of the Almighty reaches down and holds us. As we continue with verse 17, uh, 16, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord Jehovah was my support. Wow. There from 16 through 18, we see those words. The Lord Jehovah, the enemy came when I was weak. He attacked me when I was struggling. The, the, these powerful foes came after me. And you'll find out that most of the time when you're walking on cloud nine, so to speak, when you are intimately involved with God, when you're praying and, and, and you're serving and all of that's happening and you're really loving God, the enemy doesn't really mess with you then. He says, I'm going to leave them alone right now because they're, they're pretty close to God. They would probably call on God. He waits until we drift away. He waits until we get weaker. He waits until we falter just a little bit. He waits until we struggle, and then he comes. But when he comes, verse 18 says, when he comes, the Lord Jehovah God, the one who promised. I, I, and every time I read that word, the Lord, especially in the Old Testament, I remind you again that that's the word for Jehovah. Jehovah means the promise giving and the promise keeping God. Because that's wonderfully and critically important for us. We need to be reminded that God will keep his promises. He's the one that made them. He's the one who assures them and backs them and promises. Light's still on the camera, so maybe we're still recording. Uh, do we know that? Maybe we're not recording? Okay. If you can hear me, but you can't see me, hang on just a moment. We're pulling it back up. Okay, I think we're back on now. Is that right, Pastor Gary? All right. So uh, I can't see the screen and your comments and all that stuff. If you will uh, just keep doing that. Uh, hopefully they're going to capture it on the on the laptop and we'll still get the prayer request, okay? But again, at the end of verse number 18, where I think the power just, just went off for a moment, uh, the end of that verse says that, um, that He, the Lord Jehovah, is my support in that time. He's the one who supports us and carries us and delivers us through whatever might be going on so we can have confidence in that. Verse number 19 says this, He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. There's a, um, th This passage, remember, it starts with him saying that he was uh, struggling because there was um, the, the, the struggle all around him that was uh, the, the, the pangs of death and the cords and all of that. But he said, when God supported me, when, he, when I called on him, he sent all of this power and this display of his might. Then he came in personally and rescued me and supported me, put me in his hand. And when he supported me, he also brought me to this place that is spacious. It wasn't the cramped claustrophobic kind of wrapped up with cords of death and the, the grave and all of that trying to, he just set me in a spacious place, a, a good place, a comfortable place. He brought me there and he rescued me. And the only reason he did after I called on him, he heard my voice, he, my, he heard me in his ear. The reason he did it is the end of verse 19 says, he res rescued me because he delighted in me. 
He just delighted in us. Yesterday, for um, a good part of the day, I was back and forth to the house. I had to go to a graveside service and do some other things. But every chance I got, I'd sneak back to the house because all five of my grandchildren were there with Nana and and, uh, and Tara. And so I, I would go back to the house and, and I kept grabbing hold of Lorelai. And Lorelai will be um, 10 months old this Sunday. So she's um, uh, this this little little precious baby of ours, and she's just just fun. She's got a heart strong attitude. She's got she's uh, just just fussy and bossy and all that stuff. She's pulling up now on everything and, and uh, uh, crawling. You can't keep up with her crawling. She's all over the place. But um, she she loves Poppy. We we play together, and I sing a little song. Hey, my Poppy, she she's my baby. She loves my Poppy, and she will just dance the whole time. She just bounces and carries on, and she'll sit in my lap and just bounce, and we'll just have ourselves the time doing that, and just play. And then she when she's tired of it, she'll just start yelling, and she just ah, and so all the rest of the family, Kim and Tara and everybody, they'll go running. Let me hold. I said she's fine. I said I just need to yell back at her, and so I'll make the same sound. And she just stops and she just looks at me. And it just cracks me up to see it. And she's got this look on her face like, what? Why are you doing that? And I, I said, well, Lorelai, you're going to find out one of the lessons that the other four have already learned. You're not as stubborn as your poppy. I promise you this, young lady, I'm going to be just as strong-willed and, 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 and powerful and bullheaded and belligerent as you are. You're not going to win battles with poppy. I'm going to teach you. And I just delight in that little girl. I just want to hold her and bounce her on my lap and play with her. And she loves to pull up my mustache and, and anything. She loves my watch. She wants to chew on my watch and pull my, my Jesus power bands and my John 316 testimony band. She just loves that. And I love her. I just delight in her. That, and I, I think that's a little glimpse, a little glimmer of what God thinks about us, how he delights in us. Well, let me go on. It says in verse 20, the, the Lord Jehovah has dealt with me according to my righteousness. Now, according to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. David doesn't say he's perfect because he's not. But he does say, I'm striving to be like God. I'm striving to be right in his sight. I'm striving to be clean before him. I'm asking him to search me. All of those things. And he said, the Lord knows that. He knows your heart. And I believe that God knows when you're trying your best, when you really do it. He knows when you make a mistake and he's not going to wink at our sins. He's not going to do that because he's pure and holy. But he knows the intent of our heart. And he also knows the intent when our heart is, is a little bit tainted, when our motives are incorrect. Pastor Gary talked about that Sunday night in the Sunday school lesson. God not only sees our actions, but he sees the motives behind our actions and what we say and do and what we really mean inside. Verse 21 says, For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. So verses 21 through 24, he says there, David says, I, I'm, I'm not claiming to be perfect, but I'm telling you, I've kept the ways of the Lord. I've striven, I've, I've, I've tried my best to follow the Lord, do what he's called me to do and be found faithful. So then I've kept his laws in front of me. I've tried to use those as my standards. I've tried to use those as my uh, guide rails and I would walk between his laws and among his laws. I've been blameless before him with the intent of my heart. And I've kept myself from sin because I've done what the word of God says. People ask, I, I, I quote this, it seems like a lot the last year or so. If you want to be found faithful, then be faithful. He can't find you faithful if you are not faithful. If you want to be found obeying his word, then obey his word. There, there's some things that are too easy and too simple for us to, uh, to complain with. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. God knows what you're doing. He knows when you're doing right. 
He knows when you're doing wrong. He understands that. He sees that. He Again, he's not going to, to uh, give you a pass ever. We, we serve a righteous and holy God who is pure and perfect. And so we have to understand he always has to judge our sin exactly as it is. But he also has always has to reward us exactly according to our righteousness. So when we walk right before God, that's what righteousness means, being right, being in right standing, doing what you should do. When we do that, the Bible is very clear that God will reward us according to that righteousness. Then verses 25 down for the next few verses say this, To the faithful you show yourself faithful. He's speaking to God. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those who, whose eyes are haughty. You, O Lord, Jehovah, you keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. So verses 25 through verse 29, the next paragraph, if you will, he says that you you know exactly what's going on. You know when we're walking correctly, when we're not. You know and you reward us that way when we're pure. You show yourself pure. God doesn't want to be mean to you. He wants to love you. But if you are cruel and crude and rude, then God is going to respond to you that way. going to give you the just uh, uh, um, payment for that. He's going to give you the fruit of those seeds that you sow. And he says that God is the one who keeps my light burning. It is my hope in God, in Jehovah, in in his promises. That's how I I, I can see to take the next step. It's because I'm in his word that is a light into my feet and a lamp for my, um, a light into my path and a light and a lamp for my feet. He's doing that so that I might be able to know how to walk properly and how to do those things the way he's called me to do. And with his help, with God's help, You can advance against whatever the struggles are, whatever the enemies are. You can go forward in confidence because he will be your light. He will show you through his word how to deal with each day. I was talking to a a guy today, in fact, and we were were talking about the, the, the pandemic and stuff going on in the churches and how difficult it is. And every church is just different. Every church is different. We here at New Providence, I've said before, we're at a at a size. I call us a medium-sized Baptist church. The, the average Baptist church in Tennessee and, in fact, in the Southern Baptist Convention is, is a, around 65 people. That's the average church size. We always hear about the big mega churches of 20,000. But then there's a group the, the under 1,000 that comes down from 1,000 all the way to 100. Okay, and there, there's several categories within that. But us, at our size, we're in that, that category. Our building is large enough we can do social distancing and do multiple services and all that. Small churches can't do that. Big churches can't do that. We're, we're at a good size. We have multiple staff members. Other churches, our size even, and smaller, don't have two or three pastors. They usually have one pastor, maybe a volunteer secretary or an administrative assistant of some sort. So the pastor ends up having all this stuff on them. They're not able to do some of the things we've been able to do. I've told you for now 21, this is the 21st week I've been saying this. Your staff is awesome. They have enabled us to do this. Just a minute ago, power went down. We went offline for just a moment. Television went off. Lights blinked. It goes goes blank. And Pastor Gary, who you all watch him, he's on a on a uh, ankle in an ankle brace half the time, scooting around on a scooter the other half. And every, he jumped up out of his chair and ran around and, and started flipping things back on, just like a looked like a cat. I'm very impressed with his uh, balance and skill and expertise dancing around the room. But I didn't leave this chair. I just kept teaching because the light's on. I didn't know if the light on my microphone right here is on. The light on the camera right there is on. So I don't know if you're out there or not. I just keep teaching. And he's running and and he's got his um, uh, uh, iPad over there. He's got a laptop there. Got another computer here. Got the television screen here. And he's and the camera. And he's managing all that. We a lot of churches don't have a Pastor Gary. And a lot of churches thank the Lord for that, but anyway, they don't have—I mean, they don't have a, a partner in the ministry for the pastor, and the, that is a pastor's heart and all of that. 
They don't have Charles climbing up on the on the camera stand and doing that right now tonight with the students down there, ensuring that they're wearing masks and staying socially distanced. And Pastor Mitch, who's in there with the choir right now, laboring and working, trying to work with a mini choir of five or six people. And it's not like this is a praise team. These are not five or six soloists gathering together who can lead us as a praise team. This is our choir. These are folks, and, and I don't know how he's balancing all the voices and the, the music and the instruments, and all, but these folks just keep on keeping on. They just, Deb's in there working with them right now. She'll be in here in a few minutes to help us cover prayer meetings. So they're wearing multiple hats and <clears throat> doing all this stuff. Uh, just to cover you, last night, <clears throat> excuse me, my Sunday school class was meeting out on the front uh, drive through we do every Tuesday night. I saw some students down at the cross, and then uh, later one of them came walking around the building when my class was ending. Miss Deb teaches a teenage girl Sunday school class, and they were trying to meet at the cross. It was so hot, they came and met at the back porch underneath that drive through <clears throat> just sitting around socially distancing. But there's Miss Deb doing multiple things. Pastor Gary's teaching on Sunday night, managing uh, most of it. He doesn't have hardly this many devices going on, but he's managing multiple devices just on his own. Charles is doing that on Zoom. So these guys are doing some incredible things, and we're blessed. <coughs> Excuse me. We're blessed to have these folks here as well as managing emails and text messages and prayer requests and, and contacting folks. And Pastor Gary took some donuts or something down to Philadelphia the other day for a school meeting, dropped them off down there in the cafeteria for the new employees. So these guys are doing that stuff all the time. We are very, very blessed to have those things going on. And God has, has just enabled us to, to rise up. And so this other pastor was saying, well, how do I do this or how do I do that as we were talking on the phone? And he just, just didn't have the resources. On top of that, I've got the best deacons. He was asking about deacon ministry. We got the best deacons I've ever seen. I mean, just ever seen. These guys are so godly, so supportive of ministry. They've not questioned any of this stuff. They've, they've supported and ministered to the church, family ministers and other people just getting involved. Man, we are so blessed. I think that God has reached down with his hand and shaped the New Providence Baptist Church and said, okay, you're going to be my fingers and I'm going to let you minister to this flock. And they've done it all the way around. Well, let me go on here. Um, um, let's see, down at verse number uh, 29, with your help I can advance against the truth. With my God I can scale a wall. Nothing is too big of an obstacle. Verse 30 now, down uh, the next few verses, says, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord Jehovah is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in Him. For who is God besides Jehovah? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight. And I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord Jehovah, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as dust born on the wind. I poured them out like mud in the streets. Those past, those verses from 30 to verse number 42 kind of just, just go off on God, how great He is, how incredible He is, how He's empowered me and overwhelmed me and strengthened me and blessed me and done all of this stuff. He's allowed me to, to have this strength and uh, He calls Him His rock. And, 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 and it's just, it, it sounds like He's having a, a just some kind of uh, celebration right in the middle of this song, just a crescendo <clears throat> uh, for, for the whole world to hear how great our God is. <clears throat> he said, I've been fighting battles and I know that I've won battles. I've crushed people into dust and I absolutely know it's because you were the one doing the crushing. 
You are my strength. Uh, you, you, you are mighty and marvelous and wonderful, training my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. and I, He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. <clears throat> when, we were, when Kim and I were in Alaska just a few months ago, well, now it's been a year. <clears throat> when we were there, we saw some um, uh, mountain goats. We went up through that inner passage uh, through through uh, Alaska, and beautiful, spectacular sights and vistas and mountains and glaciers and all of that. And we would look on the side of a mountain, and it looked like <clears throat> a cliff that was nearly vertical. It just seemed like it was straight up and down. And there we'd be watching, and I had some of my binoculars, and I was looking at it as we were just kind of cruising real slowly up through that pass. <clears throat> and I see a white splotch, and I didn't know. I thought it might be a some snow maybe gathered there on a, a, a some outcropping of the stone. But I would look for a moment, and it was mountain goats, mountain sheep, and they they would be standing there. And I, I think they were eating. There wasn't much stuff there, but I think they were eating. And then all of a sudden, one of them would just jump, and and it was like he was jumping off the the cliff into the ocean. But he would jump again to the side of the ocean, uh, to the side of the cliff. And his feet somehow, it's like his, his hooves were fingers. And he could jump and just kind of hold on to the side. I don't know how they were standing there. It was incredible to watch them walking those precarious cliffs and, and, and sheer mountain faces and jumping back and forth. And they were running. Smaller goats were playing, running back and forth, hopping. And I thought, man, there's no way one of these little critters isn't going to fall and crash into the ocean down here where the... the whales were at and the grizzly bears were down on the on the beach beneath them it was incredible sights david said he's done that with me he said he, he made my feet like the feet of a deer it means he, he he enabled me to stand on the heights i think like david i i was amazed and david amazed like i was to watch that sight and to see a, a deer or an animal stand on the side of a cliff that there is no way, if we, if we were there, we would have to be anchored in with ropes and a mountain climber could go that, could scale that cliff, I'm sure, but they would have to have those, those tools to do it. This deer just, David said, God made me do that. He made me stand on the side of a cliff. He, he's, he's empowered me supernaturally to do anything and everything, whatever I needed to do. And, and, and I, I just love those words. His way is perfect. The word is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Uh, who is God besides the Lord? Who is the rock except our God? He's, he's used that, that idea. The Jehovah, our Lord, is God. Then he says, Jehovah, uh, and then he says, God, our creator, is our rock. And he, he shares that with us to remind us. Then down at verse number 43 through the end of the chapter, 43 through 50. He says, you have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I did not know are subject to me. I, let me pause there for one second and say to you, I, I spoke um, the, about First Peter, and Peter wrote his letter to the, to the Christians who were in the Roman Empire. Most of them, many of them were slaves. That's what David's talking about now. When he had conquered another country, another land, the people from that land that were not Hebrews, he may have uh, conquered the, the Amorites, and when he conquered them, the Amorites that weren't killed were put under authority of the King David and the Israelites. So they became his people. And David said, I didn't know those people, but you put them under my authority and made them subject to me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. Foreigners cringe before me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. They don't want to, they don't want to mess with David because they know that David is protected by God. Verse 46, the Lord lives, praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From violent men, you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you among the nations, O oh, Jehovah God. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. David said, he has chosen me 
and he gives me victories. He gives me his, his authority to, to rule and subdue nations. He has done all of that for me. How great is my God? And this truth is available for us today. Once David's descendants came and the Son of God came to earth, Jesus, we became Christians. We became fellow heirs. We too can claim this, this prayer and this song of David and sing it as our own. God has delivered us. He is our rock and our fortress and our stronghold. He is all of those things. Our God is so good and he loves you so much. He cares about you so much. We should be singing the praises of God. I was going to say even in the midst of a pandemic, but maybe especially in the midst of a pandemic. He will deliver us through this just as he has delivered us through everything else. Our God is good and great. He loves you. So do I, and I'm thankful. How about we do some praying together, all right? Let me pray. Father, bless this Bible study. Bless this psalm. Let us read it and meditate upon it and claim the promises within it. Let us recognize, as David did, exactly what you have done already, what you've been doing, what you are doing, what you're going to do. Lord, I love you and I thank you. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts and hear from us as we cry out with our voice. May you hear our voice. May you lean your ear to be attentive to our cries so that we might proclaim to you and lift up to you the burdens of our heart and the praises of our lips and it all might show honor to God as we recognize your greatness among the nations and among our family. I love you, Lord, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again so much for being with us tonight. Let me share a couple of prayer requests. Miss Deb, as I promised, just came in. So she's uh, trying to write some down. Miss Deb, we had, we crashed. And so uh, we came back on live 25 minutes ago. So the one, the comments we had before that are probably gone. So we hope yeah. Gary caught them uh, from that first listing. So there may be some new ones coming on there now. Uh, let me add on here. A prayer request for my mother and my my mom's family. Her uh, sister, the oldest sister, the one immediately above her, passed away yesterday morning. We're going to have her funeral and graveside tomorrow, and um, great funeral tomorrow and graveside uh, Friday. This is the aunt that, um, that that has been the home for my special needs aunt. For the last um, few years, she, my aunt, some special needs aunt, has been. She would go to other sisters' homes for a, for a season. My aunt Isla Robbins, who passed away, has been. Um, um, uh, she's had a couple of issues in the last couple of years, and Aunt Faye, my special needs aunt, would have to go stay with my mom, or her sister, or her brother. Um, so we don't know exactly now what this will mean for my aunt Faye what she will do. But I want you just to pray for mom's family. Mom's not handling this well. Her heart's broken with the death of her sister. So uh, please remember the Isla Robbins family. And thank you for always praying for your pastor. Um, sometimes it's, uh, I feel a little bit alone on an island, but I know I can come to you. I, I don't know why I ever feel alone because I know you'd be there. But uh, remember uh, Miss Isla Robbins family, if you will. Then I got a, a text message just a little while ago. Um, Tony um, Arnold sent me a message. His brother Aaron has been in, uh, having some real serious medical problems. Uh, and um, he had been to the hospital in the last little bit trying to deal with, with everything going on. And then um, uh, I found out today that he and a couple of others, I think there are three in all, in the, the residential home that he's staying in right now, the, the therapy uh, um, center. Uh, three of them, including Aaron, Tony's brother, have been diagnosed with COVID-19. So remember um, uh, the Tony Arnold family. Uh, we're just going to trust that, that Aaron, although he's got several other medical problems, so I want you to remember him as well. Then while I'm, I'm dealing with my family, and uh, somebody said Tony was like my, my um, twin brother. That's an insult to me, by the way, but you know, Tony, that's, that cleans his act up. But anyway, um, uh, staying with my family, just one more moment. Kim's sister, I told you last week, was diagnosed with COVID-19. She is now through the 14 days 
of, of um, her, um, since, she, since she was diagnosed, she went back to work on Monday. But she had uh, been such a sharing and gracious person, shared mm -hmm. uh, her uh, COVID-19 with the rest of the family. So her husband uh, contracted it, her son, I'm sorry, her daughter and son-in-law, and I think both of both of their children. So several folks got it. This is a very contagious disease. And if you're around somebody with it, uh, it's just hard, especially close contact family members. Um, so anyway, Tommy uh, is her her husband, uh, Kim's brother-in-law, and and uh, he was has not recovered well from this yet. He was having more troubles than she does, having some uh, respiratory problems. So they took him to the hospital yesterday through the ER. They did admit him. He is now at the hospital uh, on oxygen, and it's helping him to breathe, doing a little bit better. Uh, with some steroids and breathing treatments and all of that stuff. But I would ask you to remember him. Tommy has some other complicating medical um, issues. So just would ask you to pray for the Helms family, uh, Tommy and his wife, Connie. That's, uh, that's my family on Kim's side, my aunt uh, on, on my side, and then um, uh, also I threw Tony in there as my brother, okay? So I'm going to pray for those three right now. If you don't mind, let me start off with those. And then we'll get to some more prayer requests that you're listing. So, Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for the opportunity to, to pray. And, Lord, I do ask you to be with my Aunt Isla and, um, and all her family. I ask you to be with her, her daughter and their kids and grandkids and great-grandkids, all of them in the, in the home going with Aunt Isla. She was my very first Sunday school teacher as an eight-year-old little boy. I remember going into her class uh, 50 year, literally 50 years ago at the Red Hill Baptist Church, where she was a member all of her life. And um, I'm thankful for that testimony that she had and, and um, that she was willing to teach a little freckle-faced boy all those years ago. And I, I thank you for that uh, influence in my life. And I ask you to bring comfort and peace to the family. Let us minister to one another. Um, Lord, I, I personally and, and specifically ask you to be with my mama, uh, losing her her husband just a short time ago, her daughter. Then my, my uncle, her brother-in-law passed away now her sister she's just had a rough couple of years and and it's hard lord and and then she's uh, unable to get out very much she like uh, my friend uh, julie alexander's mom miss penny gardner at home kind of shut in quarantined on her own that's a, a struggle for her and so i ask you to be with with uh, miss penny gardner as well Lord, I don't know if she's on the list to be prayed for here tonight or not, but she's always on my list. And so I ask you to touch her and Julie, the rest of Julie's family. Once I start praying about families, I can just go down the list of all of them. I can pray for Kim's family with Tommy and, and all of the family members. I ask you to just put your hand of healing on all of them, but especially on Tommy while he's in the hospital. Just, just comfort him, give him peace. He can't see his family. They can't come in and see him. So I know it's a little bit anxious, but I thank you for technologies. He has his phone, and he's able to, to FaceTime with them. So he's able to see him a little bit and, and talk to him. And so I just pray for healing on his body. Then I pray for uh, Tony Arnold's family. I ask you to be with them, Miss Margaret, and uh, bring comfort to her. Uh, 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 Tony's brother, Aaron, Lord, I ask you to be with him and the folks that, that um, are in the facility, the rehab facility that he's in right now. Just, Lord, help them all uh, to trust you and to be healed. And, and, and just, just put your hand on their families. Lord, we prayed already for Daniel and his family. When, when it affects any of us, it affects all of us. Bearing one another's burdens and so fulfilling the law of Christ is our goal. So I pray that our church family will be writing these requests down and go back to them tomorrow. Think about them and lift them up as we go forward. So help us, Lord, be with each of these needs in the way that only you can, the best way. And we're going to trust you to be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I've been given a couple of requests here. So let me go back, refer to them. Um, uh, there, I just prayed for Aaron. He was Somebody did put him on the list. So thank you for that one. Um, uh, so uh, remember that. And um, let's see here. Pinkston's father, we got him. So we already covered that prayer request. You can keep on, but I'm just trying to make sure we cover everybody. Um, uh, we also got a request to pray for, I think, from Mark. And um, um, that, 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 who that was from? Uh, yeah, the Horners, Mark and Ruth Horner. I was, I was thinking another Mark. Mark and Ruth Horner ask us to pray for Costanza and Paula Wintley. Um, the, the, uh, that's Sean Wintley, the our missionary, former missionary, now um, serves at a church in, in Maryville. Uh, they have been diagnosed with COVID-19. So lifting them up in prayer in just a moment. Uh, Miss Naomi Walker has asked us that we pray for her sister, Evelyn, who fell on Sunday. 
I hadn't heard that, Miss Evelyn. We will, uh, Miss Naomi, we will sure pray for Miss Evelyn lifting her up. Uh, Evelyn went to our, our last senior adult fall Bible study to the Myrtle Beach. She was one, she joined us on that trip and had some fun with her over there. So we'll lift up Miss Evelyn Pillion, P I L L I uh, A N, I believe. Uh, and then also, Naomi asked us to pray for an increase of choir members as some more folks will come back. We are socially distancing, if you've watched online or if you haven't, we're, we're socially distancing the choir. We have spots marked off that they can sing uh, distanced from one another. Uh, but it really would be beneficial for the choir to, to sing. I said to Mitch Sunday, I apologize because I was singing from the front row and I think that my singing is so bad that it was loud enough that he could hear it this time. When everybody's singing, he can't hear me, but I'm afraid I'm going to throw the, the um, choir members off that are there. So a few more choir members would certainly help. So Miss Naomi, we'll pray for an increase in the choir uh, and also for Brother Mitch as he tries to lead us with great wisdom with that. Okay, so we'll lift those up as we're as we're praying. Then um, also uh, while we're praying for those, uh, that's the uh, that's the, the Wintley family and uh, Evelyn Pillion, and then the choir and Brother Mitch. So let me pray for those first, and we'll get on to the next ones. Okay, Heavenly Father, I come to you now, uh, thanking you for the privilege to be a prayer partner for these folks and a, a prayer support and encourager through the to these other folks through the the Word of God and and, and prayer. I thank you for the the. the uh, Wintley family. I thank you for Sean. And what a small world it is that, that I actually met him. Uh, Mark Horner and Ruthie had been around him for, for a long time, but I got to meet him after I flew um, uh, 2,000 miles across the ocean and went to Greece and, and served in Athens for a while. That's when we also met my friend uh, uh, Bethany Koppel, who's now in our church family and joined the church, she and Dustin. And, and I, I pray for her right now. I know she's struggling struggling with, with some issues she shared with us, with anxiety and some of the things she's dealt with. So I just pray for comfort for her. But Lord, it's just amazing that I met her. She lived in Maryville, then she moved to Nashville. And, and so I, I got to know her as I met Sean. And I, I actually spent the night in Sean's home and stayed with their family for a couple of days while we were there in Greece and ministered to them. And, and so they, they gained my heart. I, I met Jacob, their little boy, and he and I just became fast friends. And and, and I love them. And, and Lord, I ask you to be with them right now. This is a serious disease and, and a difficulty for all the family members around trying to support and encourage and not contract it themselves. So Lord, protect those in the family that don't have it. Uh, strengthen those and heal those that do have it and just move through their lives. And then Lord, all the connections that you make uh, when I met uh, um, uh, Bethany in Greece, I'd already known her mom and dad for several years serving through the Tennessee Baptist Convention and the Children's Home Ministries. And Lord, you, you just have a way of weaving our lives and stories together. Thank you for that. And But then I know too, when we're woven together, we're required to consider one another. And so we're trying to do that tonight. Be with them. Be with Miss, Miss Naomi's sister, Evelyn. Again, you, you weaved our stories together. We, I've been in, in, in church services with her through the years, but also she came to a week-long Bible study and retreat uh, to be with us. And, and I got to know her more and got to love her during that time. Sweet lady who loves you and, and, and has dealt with some tragedy and sickness in her own family. Now she's fallen. I just ask you to help her, Lord. Encourage Naomi and, and the other sisters and family members to, to walk with uh, them and to help them through this time and just, just help them, Lord, in the midst of this struggle that they're facing. And I do uh, agree with Naomi. I, I ask you, Lord, to, to be with Mitch, to give him wisdom and understanding how to best um, select music to honor you and glorify you, but also that the choir can sing and the church can can uh, participate with and all of that with a with a smaller choir. And, and then I ask you, Lord, to, to, to bring back more choir members. I know there's still some folks that are a little bit hesitant, but this is a safe place. We are doing all we can by wearing masks until we get into the building and sit down. And then if we get up and go to the bathroom, they're putting the mask back on. They're doing all they can. The choir members are wearing their mask until they go into the choir. Then they're socially distancing and, and then, then they're, they're putting their mask on to leave. Lord, we're doing everything we know. So it's safe. It's, it's as safe as the world can ever be. 
It's never going to be completely uh, problem free and all that stuff. But we're doing all we can to, to practice a good good health measures and wisdom. And I believe that your your watchful hand is on us to protect us. So that the choir can feel comfortable coming back. We've made efforts and, and taken steps uh, to, to protect them as well. So help us to do that. Just help us to bless the choir. Help them to lead me to worship as they always do. I love you and I thank you for this night. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, that's my first list that you gave me. Then hand me a second list here. Uh, Miss Julie, thank you for praying for my mother. You're very welcome, Miss Julie. Uh, and continue to pray for her sister, Carrie. She's dealing with uh, some infection. Again, good news from, I think, from last week. Uh, the the uh, insurance did cover the med medications and all that, so we're thankful to God for that. Uh, then uh, Miss Yvette has asked that we pray for Whitney and Randy. Uh, they are getting close to um, uh, uh, arrival of the, the baby boys. I've um, named those boys for them. They've not accepted my names, but I named one of them Mark Randy and the other one Randy Mark, uh, but neither of those names passed. Neither did they call them Tony Tony, so... Forget about yourself. Um, uh, they, they named them biblical names. I said, Mark is biblical. Just because Antonio is not, that's fine. Anyway, I digress. <clears throat> Pray for Miss uh, Whitney. She is very, very close. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yvette has, has uh, recovered from her recent surgery, doing better, uh, still healing, but doing better. She's not been to church the last couple of weeks trying to, to uh, again, socially distance because she's going to Nashville as soon as these babies are born. So, Miss Yvette, we're praying God will continue to keep you safe and healthy. Uh, Miss Bridges said, please pray for Darren and Geraldine. Uh, they have um, shared their cold. Please pray for all of us uh, as they're dealing with that. But um, the, the, Miss Geraldine is. Uh, did she get a test? Uh, uh, Bridget, do you can you tell me that? She went to the doctor, but I don't know that she has. Okay, okay. But, but Darren's test came back negative, so he's back at work. He probably went to work just to leave you with your, the two moms, knowing Darren. But anyway, we're thankful uh, for that. But we'll keep Miss Geraldine, that's uh, uh, Darren's mom, in our prayers. As we um, as we pray and, and uh, ask her, ask God to heal her strength, give her strength. Okay, let me pray for these three, and then we'll go on to a couple more. Uh, uh, Father, I come to you, uh, and we we pray for Julie. We'll continue to do that, lifting up her mom. I ask you, Lord, to, to be with her and bring her comfort and peace during this time of of COVID um, uh, quarantine and the stress and anxiety she's facing over that. But Lord, my greater request is by far that you will make yourself real to her, that she will see. Uh, you. I pray she'll tune into these prayer meetings and hear her name called every week and asking you to make yourself real and she'll be convinced of the greatness of God and how real you are, how much you love her. Rescue her, Lord. Show her uh, the truth of God. Be with her. Love her. I ask you, Lord, too, to be with uh, my friends uh, uh, Randy and Whitney uh, Hines. I ask you to be with them down in Nashville. I ask you to encourage them in these final days before the delivery of the twins. I ask you, Lord, just to protect and keep them and watch over them. Um, and, and, Lord, be with Yvette and Tony as they try to minister uh, to, to them. And it's, it's tough when Tony's trying to also deal with his brother and his mom and their health issues and trying to keep things floating. And, and Yvette's just been through surgery. And now they, they, they've got this joyous thing on one day and, and the difficulty the next day and trying to face it. So just, just wrap your hands around that family, Lord. I love... Um, uh, uh, Tony and Yvette, and I'm thankful for their family, Irwin and Kimberly and uh, Whitney and Randy. Lord, just ask you to, to be with all of them. Help them to, to come close together, realizing the significance of family. So bless them. And then, Lord, I ask you to be with uh, uh, Bridget's family, Darren's family, with the moms, especially bring them comfort and peace. I ask you to bring peace to Bridget. She, uh, like some others, has talked about some anxieties that she has, some social anxieties and uh, how that, that kind of kind of messes with her sometimes. So she has to trust you every day. It's a hard journey. But, Lord, I know that you are able. You will carry us and deliver us through those things. So do that, Lord. Help her to, to feel your presence. I love you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Again, I say amen. All right. Were there any other um, requests that I've missed? Um, uh, let's see. I was the only test and it was negative. Uh, much like your attitude, Darren. No, I'm kidding. I'm trying to keep us smiling. I joke every now and then. I love you, Darren. Uh, you weird guy. Uh, Miss Gertrude Dougherty. Uh, this is from Belinda. 
Uh, Ms. Gertrude Dougherty, a friend in mid-80s, has suffered a series of strokes. She is alone in the hospital. That's, that's a tragic thing, uh, Ms. Ms. Gertrude. And I think Dougherty or Dougherty is how I pronounce that. And it, <clears throat> it looks like um, uh, with a series of strokes, I, we, I don't know the status. Hope she's doing well, but in the hospital alone, that's a sad um, and frightening thing. So remember, um, remember her. This is uh, Belinda Perkey. I think they went to school together. She's um, in her 80s as well. Um, no, again, there's just a little smile. All right, it's a little smile. We we need to know God's in control. We need to smile a little bit, Belinda. So um, I know you're not in your 80s. You don't look a day over 75. Uh, it's another little smile. That's all. I miss Belinda. I miss you. I really, really do. Julie and I talked last night in our Sunday school class. I miss Julie on one side of the table and you on the other, rapid firing insults and, and jokes at me and Darren right down the table and Rick Bullard down there and you regular folks who just harass me. I miss that. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you the same face. We need to practice, by the way, our emoji faces. I think I'm going to do that for preaching in case you uh, in case we lose sound. You can so. I think that was the one she just gave me. I don't I don't know. Okay, never mind. Um, then we get back to something uh, uh, serious. Um, uh, Mike uh, uh, Shooting said, uh, "Pray for him and his family for them to continue to heal." He's been under the weather the last couple weeks. wasn't able to be with us. In church last Sunday. Then Darren said, pray for those um, involved in a shooting around Ford Road this afternoon. I have not heard anything about that. Was this this evening early? And did we know if anybody was killed or anything? Uh, let, we will, Darren, I, I hadn't heard that, so we'll pray uh, uh, for that for sure, okay? So Miss Gertrude, Belinda's friend, uh, uh, these, these involved in that shooting, and then Mike's family. And that's all that I have. Is that everything so far? Okay, let me pray for those, and we'll wrap this up in just a moment. Um, well, Deb, you're, since you're here, I'm going to ask you to pray for Gertrude and, and that, because Belinda's probably mad at me right now. So I'm going to ask you to pray for that. I'll pray then for the shooting and for, uh, um, the, the, for Mike and his family. Would you pray for Miss Gertrude and Belinda? This is my peace offering back to you, a prayer warrior. Father God, thank you for today. Father, I thank you. <coughs> with us everywhere we go and that you um, you desire for us to seek you and that you really um, are there. Father, I pray for Ms. Gertrude. I pray for um, just the situation that she finds herself in at 80 years old and, and having strokes and just <coughs> sickness. And, uh, it, it's difficult enough when you're able to get the help you need, but when you can't have family around you, it makes it even harder. Father, I just pray that you surround her right now where she is at um, and just allow her to know that you're with her. Mm. Help her to feel your presence. Uh, Father, I pray that the doctors and the nurses and those that come in to care for her, that she can um, sense a peace and, and know that they're doing the best that they can. And uh, be with Belinda as she would she would want to be there, but in her condition, she can't get the, herself get there. So I pray for um, her as well and just to continue to lift this family up and, and bring healing um, uh, to her body. God, you're good and I just thank you. And Father, I just thank you for laughter. Laughter is a good thing and uh, I thank you that it does heal heal souls and, and just uh, helps us to um, just smile. I just I just thank you for that. Father. Thank you for those things I pray in your name. Lord, I don't know the details about the shooting in, in Lenore City area this evening, but I agree with Darren, Lord. We lift up everybody involved and ask for you to uh, to protect every every life, every person that might have been involved. And we just place it in your hands, trusting you. And Lord, I ask you to be with Mike and his family as they uh, try to recover from some illness in recent days. I ask you to put your hand upon them and strengthen them, Lord, so that they might be able to... Uh, to trust you more and more and, and be able to to attend church service. I know that they desire that. I know that Mike has a burden to, to grow closer to you every day, so help him to do that. Lord, thank you for your hand of healing for all of us. Thank you for your blessings. I thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Let me share a couple of... Uh,
uh, announcements for you. And uh, w- uh, one of those is this coming Sunday morning. We're asking everyone to bring a bucket of blessings if you can. There's a the list of items on the bucket. Uh, uh, in the bucket or listed on our Facebook pages. It's on my page. I know I saw Deb shared it. It's on the church page. Maybe some others as well, probably Mitch's page. So read those, check those out, see what the items are. And somebody sent a message that they couldn't couldn't get all the items. You don't have to. If you just bring some of the items, we love it when you pack it and prepackage it for us. That way I don't have to do it. But if you can if you can only bring some spaghetti in, in uh, bags, bring some spaghetti or bring some milk or whatever it is, or a few items, and we'll we'll pick up another an extra bucket and, and combine pieces, and we'll we'll complete that bucket if need be. Okay, so we're going to do that on on this coming uh, Sunday. Gather those in. We probably will ship them possibly the following Wednesday, but it may even be the Wednesday after that. Where it's going to take us a, a couple of days to get it all. Um, uh, we, we've got to uh, co- contact the trucking company, get bills of lading and shipping weights and, and pallets and all that stuff and get it wrapped and, and shipped. So it may be a few days, but this Sunday is our day of in gathering. So I ask you to do that uh, for this week. And again, if you can't bring all the items, that's okay. Bring what you can, okay? But if you can bring them, it's a great blessing. I hope you've watched my videos of my, and pictures of my family packing them together. It's always a great time uh, for us to do that. Then also this Sunday night, we've got a couple of changes on Sunday evening, 5 o'clock for Pastor Gary and the, the wise words from Proverbs, a wise, wise teacher. Most of the time, let me tell you about our church, you get to tune in to a Facebook Live and see one of the great teachers on the planet. Most people have to climb high mountains to go sit before somebody like him to teach this lesson. But you don't have to climb a mountain to sit before this great wise teacher. You can just tune in to Facebook Live and get words from Proverbs. So uh, don't you turn me off. (laughs) We do have great teaching. No kidding. I appreciate uh, Pastor Gary's teaching. But we're moving it from 6, our normal time. We're going to move it to 5 o'clock this Sunday night because at 7 o'clock, we're asking every one of you to join us, and I mean everybody this time, guys. Please call friends, call people in your Sunday school class, and I'm, I'm asking you to do that. I, don't, I haven't seen, is Josie Russell on here? Has she signed up tonight? Don't know if she's here or not, but Josie, if you're here, I want you to call your Sunday school class. You invite them to join you and, and um, uh, others in, in Sunday school. Curtis, call your class. And Curtis, if you can't walk all the way around, if your back is hurting, you can't walk. You come in the car, you, you sit there, and you pray in the parking lot while your class does it. Call your class to come. We, this is a safe event. We're going to be outside walking the perimeter of the church. We're going to get the Sunday, I'm sorry, the prayer walking guides to your teachers this Sunday morning when they come to church, okay? If they're not there, then we will have some. We're printing these off, but we're not even handling these after they're printed, and we're going to handle them with gloves on. So we're not, I mean, we're doing everything we know. Miss Deb is going to print these and have them folded. She'll do it with gloves on. So we won't have any of our hands touching it. You'll have a prayer guide. You can pray for the school, not only the prayer walk that night, but those same prayer requests can be prayed for the the next few weeks and months. I think the schools are going to need it. But that's, uh, please, Sunday school teachers, contact your class members and ask them to join you. And anybody who can't walk it, I would ask you to go have a drive-in prayer walk. Go just pull your car up into the parking lots of the school and you pray over that prayer guide. And so we'll, we'll keep it as safe as you need it to be. This Sunday, 7 o'clock, at the, the Bless the Schools uh, that your Sunday school class is involved with. So, for instance, Tony Arnold, you go to Philadelphia, I believe, right? Who's the other class with Tony with Philadelphia? Bullard's class. Rick and, and Jennifer Bullard and, and that, that class of young families, uh, youngest families. Uh, you guys uh, contact your class members and send emails, fax, uh, fax texts, uh, uh, Facebook messages, phone calls, whatever you need to do. But get as many as you can. Let's really show up for this. Show, I mean, a lot of people show up because I want to be able to contact uh, the superintendent of the schools and the principals and say, I just want you to know we had 150 people, 250 people that prayer walked your campuses. It'll encourage them. That's the way we can bless the schools. We're not going to, at least initially, be able to do as much um, 
cooking meals and providing those kind of things as we have been. Right now, they are not going to allow us inside the schools to serve. If we have something, we can carry it into the office, but that will be the, 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 the pastoral uh, church leader, the, whoever that is that is the point person, will be the ones doing that. Um, so um, can we uh, get the prayer guided the prayer guide posted. Uh, yes, we will. We will do that as well. Uh, so if you can't, if you can't make it, we'll. You can do that uh, from home. But again, I encourage you. If you can get in your car, if you go to the grocery store, or doctors, or just drive. Drive to the campus. Be at that 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 school if you possibly can. Okay. So and then we'll make sure you get this prayer guide as well. Uh, so that's Sunday night. The Pastor Gary, five o'clock, and then the prayer walk at seven. Just meet us there at your school. So you won't see all of us. You'll probably see one of us at your school because we'll be at our own school, okay? So we'll, we'll do that. And then um, don't forget your, your um, uh, weekly tithes and offerings, doing it online. Appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. Again, you guys have been so very faithful, and I love you and thank the Lord for you the, the, that have been able to do that and been, been willing and been faithful to God because he uh, I preached a couple weeks ago. He didn't ask us. He commanded us to, to be faithful with that. So uh, you work, do that online. Uh, you, when you come here, you can certainly bring it to the services, but also mail it in or drop it by the church. All right? So do that. And then uh, let me see if I missed any other announcements. from. Again, I don't have this week's list. So uh, the youth did meet tonight with masks in the youth house. Um, don't forget to go online to the Facebook events registration. Sign up and reserve your spot for Sunday's services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, also, uh, the NPBC Mighty Men of Prayer and Disinfectant. Guys, we can use you. Last week, uh, there were only three of us that showed up to disinfect. It, uh, it only took us about 15 minutes with three, so it doesn't take a lot, but it's encouraging to see a whole bunch of guys in there. So if you can come 8 o'clock, then we pray for a few minutes. We're basically getting the, the disinfecting and the prayer done in an hour. So if you could do that from 8 to 9, we would appreciate you so very much. Uh, buckets of Blessings this Sunday and... I think that's all I had on last week's list. You know of any other announcements? Everybody good? Masks, keep keep making masks. We still need more of those. We've delivered several to schools, had all kinds of comments, compliments, and thank yous from the schools, from teachers who are sending us messages. So we'll try to pass those along. I think it's been on the women's ministry page. But we probably need to post that also onto the church page because some folks may not be in the women's ministry that do that. Okay? All right, I love you. Thank you for being here. Belinda Perky just posted that Gary is Mr. Krispy Kreme. Don't know why she's done that. Oh, because he Mount was... He, Mount Krispy Kreme. Oh, I see. It's across the room. Mount Krispy Kreme. If you climb Mount Krispy Kreme, the great teaching guru, Pastor Gary, is there with the Bible and the book of Proverbs. I think he's about to cut me off. I got to go. I love you. Praying for you. See you Sunday. I love you. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.